Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to Songs of Fellowship this evening. Thanks so much for joining. Um, we're going to sing together for 30, 40 minutes. Um, for those who haven't been before, uh, join us before. Welcome. Um, we're going to sing together, and that's, that's the most important thing that we're singing together now. Um, some old songs, some new songs. The old songs are in the um, New Apostolic Church English hymnal. I'll tell you the numbers, but the words will be in, on the screen uh, to sing along. Um, and there's a new link every week, so look out for that. I've also put, uh, I think I've put next week's up already um, on my channel on YouTube, so you can um, set a reminder um, if you want to join next week's one as well. And thanks also to Laura, who's um, doing the stuff just off camera that way. That's that's a hand. That's the most. That's the most you're going to get, I think. <laughs> um, so let's let's uh, let's start and and sing sing together. So we're going to start off with um, <clears throat> a song called uh, "Count Your Blessings," number one uh, seven seven in this uh, hymn book. This is written by a guy, um, John Tanoman. I quite like this story because he uh, his father was a great singer, and um, and this guy, well, he he, he wasn't so much. And he tried his hand at being a preacher. He left his family business, decided in America, decided to be a preacher. And he kind of was all right, but he, he wasn't particularly <laughs> exceptional at that either. So uh, he, in between going around the congregations, he, he went into insurance work. I think it was when he was 36, he realized he had this gift for writing hymns. And he started writing hymns, maybe one every day, I think, for years. Um, and this was one of his hymns. And yes, he's a good hymn writer. He's a good hymn writer. So let's, uh, let's sing this together and enjoy this song together. Count your blessings, number 177. <coughs>
So we'll go on to a, a more modern song, and this one is um, next one's going to be called um, "Amazing God." Um, Looking in the skies, first line, "Amazing God" by someone called uh, Nathan Fellingham and Paul Oakley. And we haven't done any any of his songs yet, and in fact, not planned. We're doing two of his um, songs this evening, and there's not a lot to say about this one, except uh, Nathan said about it that he wrote the chorus first. He wrote it with this other guy as well, and they pieced it together. And the chorus was all about how amazing God is and, um, and his love for us. And really, all the songs tonight are about God's love. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the theme that links them all together. And he said once he wrote that, he could have written almost anything for the verse because there's so many reasons why God is amazing. And he chose the, um, the, the story of the creation to start it off, uh, the things we see all around us. So, yeah, let's sing that together. Looking in the Sky, Amazing God, by Nathan Fellingham and Paul Oakley. Looking in the sky, whoever could deny your glory? Gazing into space, how small the human race appears. Seeing you in all your majesty, I wonder how it could be that you
Okay. Next song we're going to sing also about God's love. So I praise God's love in adoration. It's number 376 in the hymn book. Um, and it's a very well known song. I, not, 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 a, not a big story to tell, at least not one that I can find. It's, it's amazing. There are probably many, many more stories not written down than are written down. So I'm sure it's got a beautiful history as well. Um, and we can sing it together tonight and continue this song's uh, history. I'm going to sing all five verses. We're going to do it a little bit quicker uh, because it would be great to sing all the verses. So let's sing that. I praise God's love in adoration. Number 376. <coughs> I praise God's love in adoration, which is by Jesus Christ revealed. My self yield to its inspiration, this love that first my pardon sealed. Sorry about the end of the fourth verse, just maybe slightly too fast for me. <laughs> okay, right, let's do a um, song by Keith and Christian Getty and Stuart Townend, apparently. There is an everlasting kindness. They call this the compassion hymn. And again, it, not, not a lot to say about this, just that it's a really beautiful hymn. They're not only story song tellers, they're storytellers, is, is the thought I had when I was looking at these words because you can see here the words are on the right hand side and the notes are on that side so I had to really understand and picture the story so I don't forget the words and now I've said that to you I'm clearly going to forget the words aren't I as we say no don't, don't don't worry don't get distracted it's fine it's fine but it's a really beautiful song and you know really there in with the story and the pictures that they're painting here 
about God's compassion and how we show that as well in our lives. So let's sing that together, the Compassion Hymn by Keith Christian Getty and Stuart Townend. There is an everlasting kindness you lavished on us when the radiance of heaven came to rescue the lost. You called a sheep without. Shepherd to leave their distress for the streams of forgiveness and the shade of your rest. And with compassion for the hurting, you reached out your hand as the lame ran to meet you and the dead breathed. Behind the eyes of sorrow and shared in our tears, heard the sigh of the weary, let the children draw near. What boundless love, what fathomless grace, you have shown us, O God of compassion. Each day. I hope you enjoyed that that song and uh, we're going to sing now um, very well known one the lord's my shepherd and um, the one the number 216 there are two tunes in our book both are really nice actually 216 we're going to sing tonight and that's the um, that's a traditional hymn and the words were put together they although they are exactly obviously what what's in the bible psalm 23 they were put together back in the 16th 17th century they only got put to music in the 19th century um, and 
Interestingly, the pastor of a, of a church, he, he looked after various churches, and the last one in his, in his life, in his active ministry, was northeast of Aberdeen, northeast Aberdeenshire, right up in Scotland. And it was his daughter that actually um, put the tune together. Not necessarily to these words, she just wrote the tune. Uh, many hymns at that time had the same kind of sequence, same number of, of um, words per note so diff different songs could fit together she wrote the tune and, and it was later on the early 20th century um, the Glasgow ah, I can't remember the name of the choir I think it was the Glasgow Orpheus Choir became a very renowned choir um, through the First World War Second World War um, era under the leadership of one certain person who put these two bits together the Lord's My Shepherd as it was put together in the 17th century and this melody that this reverend's daughter up in Aberdeenshire um, wrote and um, I think it was sung at the um, coronation of Queen no the wedding of Princess Elizabeth and well now Queen um, and then it became very, very popular but anyway we're going to sing this lovely song together and it holds a lot of meaning for so many so many people in so many different different periods in life and we can sing it now in this one the Lord's my shepherd sing another song um, who could understand uh, is the name of the song uh, Christ crucified is also the name of the song this is also by Nathan Fellingham and his wife Lou Fellingham uh, and they wrote it together one little piece they said about this which which I want to share um, is her uh, Lou Fellingham's pastor um, said to her after she was doing a number of songs with a group with a Christian group and before she wrote this song, said to her, you know, I really like what you're doing. 
in a time where everyone's concerned about being relevant and staying relevant in this time, in this life, in this modern era, and all that kind of thing, you're still sharing the pure message of the gospel. And that obviously struck a chord because this is the result of it. Christ crucified is the only way for souls to be saved, the message of the gospel. And <clears throat> it's a really wonderful one for us to sing together. I encourage you, please um, sing along. Um, once you've done the first verse, it's quite, um, quite repetitive and the chorus and it's quite easy to, to join in. So let's sing that together. Christ crucified by Lou and Nathan Fellingham. depth of your plan to bring sinners home. Will we ever know the size of the cost, the shame of the cross? So foolish to human wisdom, but to your children it's life souls to be saved who have gone astray we preach Christ raised to life and now he reigns interceding for us till he comes again self-sufficient ways run through our veins fighting your Demanding a change So foolish to human wisdom But to your children it's life and power We preach Christ crucified It's the only way for souls to be saved more to sing a couple more to sing and <clears throat> first one we'll do is my jesus is my dearest friend it's number 202 in the hymn book and i couldn't actually find anything out about it the poet's unknown the composer's unknown but as i was preparing for this songs of fellowship tonight i also read this and i just want to read this out of romans 5 from the bible which really connects me to this my jesus is my dearest friend but when we were still helpless, Christ died for the wicked at the time that God chose. It is a difficult thing for someone to die for a righteous person. 
It may even be that someone might dare to die for a good person. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. By his blood, we are now put right with God. How much more then will we who were God's enemies, but he made us his friends through the death of his son. Now that we are God's friends, how much more will we be saved by Christ's life? But that is not all. We rejoice because of what God has done through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has now made us God's friends. What a wonderful thing. It's not just a nice song or a romantic idea that Jesus is our friend or God is our friend. It's, it's there. It's written down in Romans 5 and other places. And we're going to sing it now together as well. Number 202, My Jesus is My Dearest Friend. One more song to finish off with, and um, new song, modern song. Chris Tomlin, Matt Redman, and Ed Cash are the guys who wrote this one together. It's called "How Can I Keep from Singing." The words um, were written many years before, um, and this is a new melody with a new chorus at the end. And some of you might know this. There is an endless song. 
and um, don't know much about the story. I did read about it, but I've actually for forgotten quite a bit of it. Sorry. Um, so Google it later. But what I do know is someone called Pauline T. Don't know what the T stands for. That's all we know. Penned the words, and then they ended up being attributed to Lowry. I think he did the music or finish or something like that. But anyway, it's it's always that case of that person who's slightly not known about who did this and we can share this joy together so I'm really special about that so we'll sing this to finish there is an endless song how can I keep from singing by Chris Tomlin Matt Redman and Ed Cash an endless song echoes in my soul I hear the music ring and though the storms may come I am holding on to the rock I finish for tonight and you know, just just before we go and just before we say a, a prayer to finish I just want to say um, Laura's uh, now 37 weeks pregnant I think so the idea is that we we're going to try and carry on 
the songs of fellowship and find a way to do it. it might be that we just don't have the words one week or a few weeks or something like that <laughs> but we'll try we'll try and carry on but i'm just telling you so that um, if you log on next time and nothing happens and no one appears and there are no messages, you'll know why. And <laughs> it will be on the week after. Okay, so that's, um, that's, that's, uh, that's that. So know about that. Um, the link's on my channel so you can set a reminder for next week already. And let's say a prayer to finish. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we have the opportunity to sing like this together. Lord, we don't underestimate the power and the strength that this can give singing to you in joy, that we can share this together. Father, you've blessed us so much in this time. Yes, we've suffered also, and we have joy and sorrow next to each other together. Father, and we're experiencing, but we're experiencing this with you. Lord, walk with us in the coming days. Whatever happens, whatever comes to pass in our lives in the next few days and with our families as well and all the things we carry and the concerns help us and be with us that we can walk with you that we can carry the load that Jesus carried that we can love and that we can share this gospel somehow in whatever way that you put in front of us Lord God let this all be possible bless us now in this week our families too all those we're concerned about all those who are suffering help all in the name of jesus christ amen so thanks very much and uh, see you soon take care bye bye